You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV. Hey there, Ruby fans. Welcome to the Ruby After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. We're talking about Volume 2, Chapters 1 and 2, Best Day Ever, and Welcome to Beacon. I'm Matt Lieberman, and joining me on the panel all season long, the fantastic and talented Miss Megan Salinas. Hey, everybody. And Miss Katie Cullen. Salutations. Yes. Uh, who, if you, if you don't know, Katie is our, <laughs> our resident Ruby and Rooster Teeth super fan tied into the community. I am the lore expert and the Tumblr resident. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> So that should tell you everything you need to know. And I am very much the neophyte, so I will be turning to you <laughs> all episode. And we have a fantastic special guest with us here today. Uh, Ruby creator Monty Ohm is with us. Hey, Monty. Hey. Hey. How's it going? It's going great. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, I mean, these are two great episodes. I loved uh, the food fight in, <laughs> in, uh, in Chapter 1. How long did that take, like, from top to bottom to, to choreograph and, and animate? Uh, it, you know, like most productions, it kind of goes up and down. I have, like, spots of being, like, putting, like, all effort towards it. And then there are days where I'm, like, spread out amongst a bunch of different things. Like I, that, I, I'd say that started in about January, February, when we were like kind of decided what we were gonna do, mm -hmm. and um, I'd say it took about four months on and off because you know there's always a bunch of other things that have to go on. Yeah, about right. four months. Okay. Wow. Do most of the fight sequences take about that long? Oh, they really vary. Like it's so funny because like. Um, the, one, the big fight from last year with the crow and the scorpion and stuff, mm -hmm. that was like a week and a half. Really? Wow. And it, it really, it really kind of, like, it, it really depends on, like, you know, if you have just a clear idea of what you're doing. And I would consider four months long for that food fight. Like, it was yeah. like, it, it was like, mostly because I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure out what to do. Like, I knew I wanted the the food to match the character and I wanted it to be funny but I wasn't sure and then I, it, it finally it finally clicked when I knew that everything about it had to be completely they had I had the, the, the characters had to take it just as seriously as they would take any other fight mm -hmm. in the back of my mind I was like oh just it's a food fight just you know a throwaway thing that I throw out there and it's funny because it's funny it will only be good if I treat it as seriously as like any other fight I would do if, even if this even if the stakes are, you know, uh, aren't aren't real, I have to pretend they're real and make, you know. So I, it, I want. Remember that episode of Community with the paintball fight? Yes. yes. Uh, where we're like, everything about it has to be like co completely committed to it. The music, the acting, the action, all of it. Yeah. Aside from the actual, what you're putting on screen. Well, exactly. Just, just ridiculous. The more seriously you take it, the more ridiculous it is, and the more fun we have. And that's yes, really. One, once I figured out I was just I was supposed to take it as seriously as anything else, that's when it started really happening. And yeah. that's what made it great because it was a serious fight with a bunch of completely ridiculous elements. I turkey fists. <laughs> turkey <laughs> fists. <laughs> Hashtag turkey I, fists. I will never be over turkey fists. <laughs> um, so before we get carried away and before we get into the plot, I, I just want to mention a few things. One, uh, for those of you watching live, hello. Uh, if you're on the chat roll, uh, you can send your questions uh, for Monty to Booth Steve. That's Steve Lemieux, uh, our engineer in the booth. Say hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. Uh, <laughs> and on, he'll be, he'll be pulling happen. those questions. Or you can tweet them directly to me, uh, at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. Let's, let's all give our, our Twitter handles here at the top. Oh, you can tweet me at the Manguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N, and you can get me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaje. That's K I A X E T. Okay, uh, so we're gonna start for the first half of this uh, this interview. We have about an hour, um, so we're gonna start by talking about these episodes and asking episode specific questions uh, and questions potentially about the future, and then we're gonna go to your questions in the second half and just kind of have a general conversation. All okay. right. Um, so we open uh, we open the uh, volume two meeting these uh, these new characters uh, uh, Emerald 
and Mercury, uh, yep. who are are thieves. They're a little gritty. They're <laughs> they're they have this great dynamic with each other. Um, they're I, hilarious, charismatic, and awful people. <laughs> awful people. <laughs> awful people. <laughs> yeah. This like they're playing this perverse game with Tuxen, uh, with the books. He says he has every book, and they just keep asking books. And then when he finally doesn't have one, they reveal their <laughs> evil nature. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to talk about this scene. Talk about it. I just this. Oh, this was incredibly well written, and this, what, well, trying to figure out how to start right talking about this scene. It sets the tone for this series. Because if you look at volume For this one, volume. Yes, for this volume. And I think for the series going on from here. Hmm. Because if you look at this series, it's it's very much akin to a shonen anime. It is very action-based. Everyone has a weapon that is also a gun, to the point where <laughs> it's a running joke that it's also a gun. And most weapons are either bladed and can cause other heavy damage. And yet most characters seem to walk away from a fight just fine. And no one has died. Volume 1 has zero fatalities that aren't creatures of Grimm. And those are monsters, and it's like a video game, and you're supposed to kill the monsters, whatever. Very first scene of Volume 2. We introduce this character, and, oh, you know, he's got a sense of humor, and he looks like Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. He does! And he, <laughs> and he does! And he runs a bookstore, and are you in love with him yet? Yes, sign me up. <laughs> We're going to kill him. What? Yeah. This is our very first... I can't first. say I was very happy with that development. No, but <laughs> think about it. We have three characters introduced in this scene. One of them does not make it out alive. That has not happened in this series before. This is the brand start going right. out a window. Right. Well, this Monty, was that, the, was, that a de was that a deliberate decision? You know, we have to, we have to make a point here that things are going to change? Uh, yeah. I will, like... I mean, a lot of credit to that scene goes to Miles and Carrie, quite honestly. Like, um, they handled the bulk of the, the tension of that scene and the, how the characters played out and who the characters were, which, you know, I had brief, like, sentences about what Mercury was. And again, just like past characters, they were really able to move it forward. Um, Tonal-wise, it's almost like, well, we're, there's, there's like a, there's, there's a benchmark for this show we're trying to achieve. And um, one, of, one of my favorite one of the things we're trying to do is, uh, you know, get this, like, I, I don't like animes that go on forever and have no progression, not just for the characters, but also for the, like, the, the maturity of the show. Uh, it was, like, it was pretty extreme to kill this guy off right from the, I liked him. <laughs> yeah, I think we, <laughs> we all liked him, yeah. like, a lot. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, we, we can, you know, we get, sometimes we'll, we'll have to get, you have to get ruthless with your characters, and, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I can't say that will be the last time, but oh no! <laughs> um, it, at the very least, you know, the, the one of the key points that, like, in the first meetings that we had after we finished last year, was we need people to care more about the characters. So we need to like put in more deliberate screen time for later stuff to happen. And mm -hmm. um, so the point, you know, a lot of this season, there's a lot, and I've mentioned this before in panels and stuff. There's a lot that was supposed to happen this year that's probably going to happen next year because of the amount of content we're trying to squeeze into this season. It happened it's happened to us a lot of times. It happened in Red versus Blue season mm -hmm. like half like almost all of season 10 was supposed to be the back half of season 9 and we just had a day where we're like, you know what? We're trying to accomplish so much. Let's not kill ourselves by trying to rush past. I I've, I've, I've seen I've had episodes of shows. It was an episode of Batman Beyond a long time ago that I really really liked. And it should have been three episodes instead of two. Which Tell one? Us. Tell us. It's, it's the one where, uh, well, Terry McGinnis gets his ass kicked by that nunchuck guy from Cobra. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the last season, yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that, it's like, there were times where I just like felt like the lines were overlapping, and I'm like, oh, if, this, if they just let this, this, th these two episodes breathe a little more, it would have been so much more epic. But, you know, with the accommodations of the media and you know how you have to work your production they're like well, well just make these two episodes one they're like oh it would have been so good we you know knowing that sort of stuff happens we're like okay day one we're like let's give ourselves more time why because we want to because it's you know it's like if you had qualms about the lack of screen time for characters last year well we'll certainly address that uh, this year because we also suffer from a format where it's partly on uh, it, it, it falls partly to our production it falls on part partly to uh, just you know, 
the the fact that we're you know a shorter format show, and you know also the fact that we can only make so much at a time. So, uh, it's a lot more of more as much as we can do it for. So that's yeah. the best okay. way to say it. So, would you say that like you know that an episode like like episode two, which is a lot slower and is more just about like spending time with Team Ruby, would you say that uh, it's those kinds of episodes, you know, where we're just learning to love these people, that that's why we're pushing some of the plot stuff back? Mm -hmm. Is you mm -hmm. need a balance of both? Yeah, absolutely, because um, there's, there, there are parts in this series where we look at the mark that's coming and we're like, well, we can't go back from that, so we have to do this now. Uh, and, you know, the characters, I mean, that's part of growing up is like, you know, you just like, you, you try to, you try to expand so that when you, when you go up, you have a, like a base, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, how much we accomplished last year from setting the ground, it's not even from just a story standpoint. It's also from like a, a pipeline standpoint. Like we have buildings that we don't have to spend models, uh, uh months modeling. We have characters that don't need to get modeled. Um, uh, things that are built now so that we can add stuff to accent what is already there. So, like, you know, uh, the fact that we have background characters is part of, uh, you know, retroactively saying, well, we didn't have the cycles for it back then. Let's put it in now. So, that, No more shadow people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, to replace the uh, the silhouette shadow people, we just, you know, and it, and it just, every one of those touches just adds a little more. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it's enough to, to help you kind of live in the world. You don't have to build from the ground up anymore. Yeah, yeah. Now until you're I, just hanging pictures until on the wall. I blow walls. everything up and then we have to start again. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything feels bigger and more beautiful, like right off the bat. Like, uh, like uh, Mercury's facial animations. Like or her eyes are just like gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 crazy. It's like it fe it feels like a subtle difference, but it makes all the difference in the world. Do you, you know can what I mean? absolutely attribute that to um, the animators just. Uh, knowing the system better because it's not a uh, complete it, it's I've been at jobs where they'll finish a project especially when I was working in, in video games where they'll finish a project and they'll say let's scrap this engine and start from scratch and do it all better but then oh. your team kind of suffers like everyone gets excited oh Unreal Engine 3 now Unreal Engine 4 but people forget that it's the team that has to get accustomed to the engine like we all know that at the bet at the end uh, point of a of a console gen gen generation, like the the last few games they 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 really sneak out there are like the best ones because the developers know the console. Uh, much the same, like I didn't reinvent the wheel, but I did spend several months in R and D just trying to address some of the animators' problems they had last year, and then the animators also, because it wasn't completely different from last year, just hit the ground running again, and did it better, because they had more tools and it wasn't a completely new tool set. Great. Awesome. Yeah. You guys want to introduce this uh, this food fight scene? We were reintroduced <laughs> to Team Ruby and to Team Juniper. This, I, I adore the fact that everyone is just continually throwing shade at Weiss. This, <laughs> this has been one of my favorite aspects of these first few seasons. Friends, teammates, Weiss. Weiss. <laughs> hey. Ice Queen in the second episode. Mm -hmm. And then Snow Angel comes back. Uh. And I had to stop the video. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> And it's, thank you, Neptune. I love, Especially because John was like, hey! Yeah. Wait a second. No, I love that you he's crushing. I love that it, he's dear. crushing on Weiss. That's perfect. Well, that's the thing. Is like I don't even know if he's crushing on her. I think he's just doing it because he can. I think he likes a challenge. Mm, <laughs> Neptune? Yeah. I think Neptune likes a challenge. Maybe oh, I'm wrong. I think wrong. he's a little full of himself. I don't think yeah. he sees Weiss as a challenge. I think okay. he's just like, everyone loves me. Mm -hmm. She'll love me, too. <laughs> I do just, just love like that. that. Well, be cool, dude. Be yeah. cool. He's like, dude, look Please. who you're talking to. Please. <laughs> we're, team, we're team K-pop. I'm already cool. Yeah. Um, we also, we, we meet Sun again, uh, the faunus that we met towards the end of last season, uh, and he, he accidentally reveals to Neptune <laughs> that Blake is a faunus. And then it becomes, but don't tell anyone. It's yeah. totally and I mean, a secret. And yeah. I mean, don't tell anyone secret, not yeah. tell Crimson after I'm gone. Or Scarlet. 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 Which, uh, I, I'd I just like spoke. to ask, is Scarlet a member of Sun's team? Yes. Okay. Uh, Red hair. There's a, there's a little bit of mystery around it, but yeah, it's it's uh in, it's indeed Scarlet. Okay, because we I have plans for that character, uh, but I, you know it'll take a while to get to them. But I, I guarantee a lot of people will be very happy with him. 
Okay. That's well, good. I'm working under the assumption that we have plans for pretty much every character we're running into. Team Coffee, Penny's team, the army, everyone. I'm assuming that by the time we hit the end, everyone's going to have some sort of role, and not all of them will make it out alive. <laughs> Probably not. Is no. that fair? <laughs> Is that a fair assumption? Uh, you know, who, who knows how far this will go, you know, and how old our fans will be by the time we get there. So <laughs> uh, what would be appropriate to put on screen? We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Okay. We actually we we had a question. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw a couple of fan yeah, tweets uh, in it. here from uh, at Holy Fudge and Crack. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to edit that? No, that's oh, actually okay. it. Holy Fudge and Crack. How many volumes of Ruby are estimated to be made? I know you can't know that for sure, but uh, uh, Miles and Kerry said that you had kind of pr mapped out the plot of this series. Yeah. Um, it's hard to know how far we'll go with this. You know, the landscape always changes, but it's good to have an idea of where you want people to be. How, fa how, how long it takes you to get there is hard to tell, but, you know, if we look at the past as a rough estimate, you know, I would say I have seven seasons worth of show in my head, but you can say that with, like, being able to say there's a, an event in season six that I'm like, oh, I could actually just do that right now. Yeah. And um, on top of that, you also can never predict the fact that you, these, the one, two, three that exists now was originally supposed to be one, two. So some things might come sooner, some things might get smaller, some things might get bigger. But a realistic estimate, I would say that there's a, the amount of things I want to do is seven to 10. Uh, right. We'll see. All right. Very cool. Um, so, uh, everyone's just throwing food, uh, at, at Weiss. Uh, well, it started innocently enough. It started with, uh, Yang yeah. and yeah. Nora mm -hmm. throwing food back at one another, back right. and forth at one another, the catch this in your mouth thing, and right. it escalated, and then there was a cream pie that Nora tried to blame on Ren, because <laughs> this is what Nora does. Yeah. She's basically <laughs> Warhammer Pinkie Pie, and I, love I adore Nora. her. She's my favorite. Oh, yeah. Nora's, her, like, everyone's favorite. Her line, I'm queen of the castle, that's mm -hmm. my it favorite comes line back. from season one, and it, it comes came back, back, and it comes it's back. menacing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my favorite line is the threat to break Carden's legs. That's She right. just sounds <laughs> so... Ha and it's been mentioned twice, and I'm I'm waiting for Carden's legs to get broken. <laughs> hey man, what because if, it's happened. They, they the, brought it maybe up twice. That's, maybe Rule that's the, maybe that's the big event from season six that can <laughs> that happen now. Is that's that's Ren's big character arc? Is he He's has to be the, no, he has to be the first handicapped first handicapped hunter. <laughs> no, 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 Huntsman. Carden. Oh, Carden. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, if I think if anyone was threatening to break Ren's legs, uh, Nora would take care of that in very short order. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so it becomes an all-out crazy food fight yeah. with people getting thrown against the walls and running for the hills. Do you guys and... have a favorite moment in this? I mean, for me, it's Melon Hammer. I, like, I love the baguette. The baguette fight is great, but Melon Hammer was like the moment when I'm like, oh yeah, so we're just having a great time here, aren't we all? I, on one hand... Turkey fists? <laughs> turkey fists! <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag turkey fists. Yeah. On the other hand, Pyrrha using her semblance on a massive scale for the first time. Wow. Mm -hmm. the and cans, I have to say, Schnee Cola, Dr. Piper, we like grape soda. I'm, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I adore the references, the red versus blue references in this episode, the everything. I, It's inside joke season, yeah. and I'm thrilled. What about you, Megan? I I'll be honest, I liked the baguettes the best because it reminded, uh, this is just on a personal note, it reminded me of when I was in high school and me and my friends used to sword fight with our water bottles <laughs> from the cross country team. Probably so, not quite like that though. Yeah, no, not to that <laughs> not scale. Not as <laughs> I don't think anybody ever got really hurt. So I don't think anybody got really hurt in this fight. That's true. Yang went through the ceiling and <laughs> she was just like, that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, another thing that kind of goes down and is kind of almost glossed over is Weiss told Team Juniper about about Blake being a faunus off stage at some point. off stage at some point and uh, and we got a question on the chat roll did uh, Weiss tell Juniper about Blake being a faunus with Blake's permission or did she let it slip accidentally? Oh, I think it's obviously not her permission because notice Pira was don't yeah. say anything. We <laughs> <laughs> well, it's more so that she was there was he was. They, they were saying it out loud in public. Oh. Um, you know, the, the team gets along a lot better now. You'll see it um, much more in the later episodes. But um, uh, we do benefit from some off-screen chemistry from the characters. So, like, uh, 
it's it's more so that's just Blake's personality. She's always giving us grumpy cat face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it. So yes, um, you know, she it. They're they're in the know because they're pretty close. And even though Junipers are B team, they're a pretty like, I mean, they're they're pretty awesome B team. So we want to keep them in the loop for things. So at the very least, we try to make sure that uh, the team kind of works in conjunction. We have we have some pretty cool moments with them interact, interacting with each other later as well. Okay. Cannot wait. Um, so Glinda Goodwitch comes in and she just, she resets everything immediately, like, like it's nothing. <laughs> um, and, and like, I have to imagine she's using, she's using her semblance. Yes. Uh, but uh, I had a few fans tweet at me uh, and ask on the chat roll, how is this not magic? Because it feels very <laughs> Harry Potter. Magic is a, a subjective term. I mean, I, 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 I like honestly, even on, in our day to day, when we're talking about uh, X person does this thing, you know, the word magic will come out because it's an easier word to say. I mean, magic is a word we use to define something we can't understand, and like not having to explain why she does that is easier. But you know. Let's just assume we just attach our own word to it. It's just, you know, it's dust this time. But mm-hmm. it's, is it any less magical? No. Is there an explanation? Yes. Do I need to go through the math and science for it? <laughs> Not immediately, because that would be a very boring show. I've, I've always believed, you know, I mean, imagine a, a, a hundred years from now when our cell phones are so small that uh, they're implanted in our head and <laughs> all of us have tele- telepathy. Uh, 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 all of us can read minds and, you know, talk uh, telepathy, you know? Yeah. And that, uh, us, you know, if we were to look at that now, that would be that would be pretty magical. I mean, 100, 300 years ago, some take that person and put them here now, and they would take every, that episode of The Simpsons. Marge is like, man, the future is so much better now that we've invented magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, it, and Thor also and you look at technology. right, and I mean, you look at something like like say like uh, the universe of Avatar: The Last Airbender and the Legend of Korra. You know, in season two of Korra, they go all the way back and explain, re, like, explain why all of the mythology of Avatar even exists. Best so, two episodes right. in Korra. Oh, absolutely, by Amazing. far. If you remember, like the first episode, you know, um, Sokka was like, you know, you and your crazy water magic, and you know, uh, she was like, no, it's 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 not magic, it's bending. But <laughs> you've, we've we've gone so far with the show, we pretty much. Don't even ask that question anymore. Right. This but is we, just, this is the world. We actually had a question from uh, Not So Average Joe on Tumblr. She mentioned that at one point different colors of dust had been brought up and different levels. And she was wondering if we could get, I say she, I assume she, if I've misgendered you, I apologize. Um, they were wondering if we could get a better explanation of colors of dust, levels of dust. Does that affect things? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the easiest way to say it would be dust is like ground up materia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's someone in the chat going, wait, what's materia? <laughs> so if you've played Final Fantasy VII, which is, you know, one of my favorite games, it's like, well, you know, you have categories of what each one does and stuff. And, you know, when there's a, when there are, t- I mean, I had to make this decision pretty far back, like in the Weiss trailer. All of the shells in her sword were actually red because it complemented her outfit more. But then I had trouble with the storytelling of it, of her actually changing shells to different categories of magic. Magic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, so, like, I, I, I kind of like, all right, I, I, I opted over the design choice and made all the shells a different color to show that she was utilizing different types of dust in order to, you know, show her understanding of it as a character because she's the mage of the team. Uh, yeah, and it, it's it's it won't be the last time it happens. So there's like various colors. I mean, it having like this rainbow of of things. It, it helps telegraph things, and it kind of like stabs me a little to to kind of have to go over those design choices sometimes. Because sure. It's just like your character is just adorning rainbows all over them. <laughs> um, there was like that one shot at the end of Final Fantasy Advent Children where they um, detonated all their material. I'm like. If they were glowing like that the whole time, <laughs> that would be very distracting. Yeah. No one looks at Cloud's design and pictures like all these 
multicolored marbles all over him. It would just be <laughs> kind of weird. So, you know, I, I kind of have to take you it with You know, he salt. just keeps them under his shirt, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps them close because, you know, someone could pickpocket and snatch your materia. That's why you got to keep them like close Yuffie. to the chest. Yeah. Like you, Exactly. Bahamut, exactly. Like Who managed to get Matt, them from yeah. under his shirt. Are you casting Bahamut or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> somebody's, somebody's got some reference fire up in the booth. Hello. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, and we, this is why Booth Guy is wonderful. Here, we got to move on. Uh, yes. So Glinda, she resets the whole room, and she's just like, she's just like. Uh, I have it written yeah, what's down. The, what's I have the it line? written down. Children, please do not play with your food. <laughs> and I'm just like. Props to Kathleen for that one. My uh, but gosh. But I'm just like, they should be suspended. <laughs> I'm totally. This is a combat-based school. She has had to reset this more than once, probably once a week, because that's how often people get into fights. Because that's what you do at oh Beacon. My God. How much money do they have to rebuild <laughs> rebuild the campus every other day? She just well, puts it back together. Apparently it's very easy because she just did it with one move. So yeah. I know. <laughs> uh, well, and she's Glinda. Right. And she just she's Glinda. She's Glinda. Boom, and done. Uh, You're good. Ozpin comes in, he's like, you know, don't don't, you know, don't get too hard on them. They're just kids. Let them have this. They Let won't it have it for much longer. No. Um, <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Well, that's exciting because, you know, we want we want things to get more serious. We want things to get darker. Speaking of darker, we we get to have a moment with Roman. We get to see what he's <laughs> up to and learn that Emerald and Mercury are, uh, are working for him or wor with him and for uh, Cinder who is uh, all of their boss and they've From got the looks of it yeah um and it was roman's responsibility to kill tuxen and he wasn't taking care of it because he's too busy uh stealing all and the dust what got me <laughs> this is after last week's interview with miles and carrie and miles saying here's a concept eh eh <laughs> right. every time someone in this episode went eh i'm like it's miles <laughs> Yeah. The pitch process got written into these episodes. Eh? Yeah. Um, so I'm very, very curious about about Cinder and what she's up to. I mean, like, what? So they've been gathering up all the dust in Vale. Uh, dust prices are skyrocketing. I don't know if that's part of it. Like, what do you guys Supply think? And, and Monty, what can you tell us? Um, I mean, you know, and at the end of that, she said, we're moving on to phase two. It's, it's the kind of thing where, you know, I'm one of those guys that like will watch like those really long running animes. It just goes on and on and the layers go so deep. But then when you get to that payoff, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> so we put in those things really early on where you, where you get, where you like, however long it takes from now to make this point, we're going to be like, the, the watcher is going to be like, that's why they did that. And we're going to be like. Eh? <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's hard to say what she's up to without saying what she's up to, other than that she knows what she's doing, and right. there's like a long play. Uh, the characters, you know, the more mysterious characters, uh, Cinder and Ospin and such, you know, we, we try to balance this really fine line of like, I want to say this, but I don't want to say too much, because our audience is really smart, you know, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. so we just kind of have to put just a, a bit of it out there without being too obvious, because we learned a long time ago with Red versus Blue that, uh, you know, you give them a time to figure it out, and they'll, and they'll figure it out. The and we community just like, picks yeah. up yeah. on things I so have, quickly. I, just, I have this weird inkling that Cinder and Ozpin have a, have a past together. I mean, being headmaster, he, does, he, he certainly has a past with a lot of students. Um, hmm. He is very old, so he knows a lot of people. Um, and there's things that have, you know, gone by. The people that have come and gone from his school that, uh, you know, they all kind of like uh, have their own history in dealing with it. Um, if there's something to deal with later, it would be something that probably will happen further down the line, especially with Cinder. Cinder is a character for me that I have this big chart and web of things that, I mean, I've actually told people, like, in, you know, trying to bounce ideas off them, and I, I would like dump whole parts of the plots to people, and it would just, you know, they'd be like, oh my god, and then be like, <laughs> I wouldn't even have to tell pe people not to tell people because even if you, re even if they said it, no one would believe them because it's just a little like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So it would be like telling someone the end of Full Metal Alchemist when they've only just started reading the manga. It yeah, just doesn't compute because you don't have the pieces. Yeah, yeah. 
exactly and no one would uh, no one would believe them even if they even yeah. if they did um here we got a, another tw uh twitter question from at shockwave 1138 will cinder's little foursome of villainy be called team cream c-r-e-m <laughs> no See, because I actually cinder was on i mean uh you know it's mercury and emerald they actually have their own team right because we got that kind of trio going at the end of episode two i mean they aren't they aren't students after all right they aren't like well they aren't legit students of, Be of beacon especially cinder who's just a little bit older and uh you know torture who's also older but uh not definitely not team cream yeah because, <laughs> uh, the origin of some of these characters comes from other team names i may okay. have even mentioned it in the past and if i told you it you'd be like that's ridiculous that's a dumb name but um there's you know uh uh, there are there, they there are like other unmentioned team members where we keep them on reserve to complete their roster. But like, hmm. it was like one of the earliest things with the show, where like, okay, here's one person. Now we need three others. And Mercury and Emerald happen to fit one of those slots. Tortric, uh, definitely not uh, a team. Like they're not Beacon students, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's Beacon students who wind up on teams. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And Sun, evidently. Right. And Sun, and also, evidently. Also, one of the original plans was for the for the Vital Festival was that. Uh, you know, back in season one, we're like, okay, one exchange student. And we're like, oh, that's kind of lame. How about two exchange students? They're like, so it's it's a varying number where they don't send their whole team. Like, for example, uh, you know, Sun and Neptune are here, and they get, they'll get they get most of their time this season before, uh, you know, we see the rest of their team. Uh, oh. But we don't, we don't want to overcrowd this cast. Yeah, yeah. we've we already got so many players. The reason to add people is to make it feel more alive than mm. anything. So okay. th th there's definitely a lot of people who just will take the background because it helps to fill out the world here uh, uh so, we we have to move on uh, just just really quickly i just need to talk about itunes and talk about yes. after buzz tv uh before we move on uh folks if you if you like uh what we're doing here with the ruby after show we really appreciate your support we're so happy so many people are tuning in live that's amazing um if you've never been to after buzz tv before we are an after show network what does that mean it means we put out youtube and itunes and stitcher podcasts that recap your favorite shows immediately after they air so say an episode of the walking dead airs on amc on sunday night we watch it live and then we go right into the studio and talk about it you can watch it live with us and join in the conversation or you can get it into your sub box or into uh, your iTunes the next day. It's a great, great system. We put out between 60 and 70 hours of free shows every week. So if you're interested in what we do, check out our iTunes page, check out our YouTube page. We cover basically every show under the sun. If you love anime, Megan and Katie do uh, do a bunch of shows. You guys do Sword, on, uh, Sword Art Online. You do Attack on Titan. You started doing Legend of Korra. And uh, there's also a Sailor Moon podcast. And a Sailor yeah. Moon Crystal we're not, podcast. We're not in that one, but yeah, it's we're there, not. and I've been yeah. watching, and I'm so yes. excited. Yeah. It's wonderful. Uh, you know, Game of Thrones. Uh, I do Defiance, and uh, I do I do a lot of sci-fi shows. You, if we listed all the shows that yeah. Matt does, we would be here for the rest of the hour just <laughs> and listing then off some. the shows. And then, and some. then some. Some. But in any case, if... Uh, uh, if you want to support us, because we're, we're giving you an opportunity to talk to all the folks here at Ruby, go to iTunes, and the best way you can support us, rate and review the shows on iTunes. It's the best way for us. Uh, five, we love five-star <laughs> reviews. Uh, you know, It's the best way for us to, A, know that we're doing a great job giving you the show that you deserve, and it helps us get sponsors here at the studio, which is how we're able to keep our lights on and our doors open and all of our programming at the low, low cost of free. So, uh, so go to iTunes. Rate and review the shows that you listen to and that you watch on YouTube. It really, really helps. And uh, you can also go to YouTube and leave us some great comments so that we know how how uh, how we're doing. But it's those iTunes reviews and iTunes ratings that help us keep the doors open. So that is crucial. Thank you. You could sell ice to Eskimos. <laughs> I, I have sold ice to Eskimos in a glass of water for the low, low price of free. That was very nice. Okay, that stopped it was making almost, sense. Yeah, it was almost a thing. That stopped making sense. It was sense. almost a thing, and then it wasn't, and I squandered all that wonderful goodwill. You unthinged <laughs> it. Good job. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I want to start talking about uh, Chapter 2 a little bit. Yes. We open on this very compelling conversation between Ozpin and Ironwood. Um, who I believe we haven't we haven't met before. He is new this season. Yeah. He is. I think he's with Penny. Yeah. Judging from uh, the opening sequence. Oh, what can you tell yeah. us, Monty, about yeah. about Dude Iron in the back of the limo, that guy. Uh, I didn't background. even think about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, Ironwood is. Uh, yeah, he was there with Penny. 
uh, in the intro. He's de he's definitely uh, with this. He has a pretty big entourage of. Did we mention where they're coming from? Uh, yeah. Atlas. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm just. <laughs> I we didn't, uh, they're from Atlas. Penny right. from Atlas. Ironwood from Atlas. I think we mentioned that. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I've always compared like uh, or tried to describe the Vital Festival to Miles and Carrie as like if it was like your town was hosting the Olympics and everyone was coming to town. But there are some people here who uh, who are just here to do business. And uh, he's a he's a heroic guy who has the best of intentions, but um, his ways, you know dependent on you know the, the state of the world they, they might be for the better they might be for the worse but he he definitely means well um it's pretty cryptic especially with the conversation between him and ospin who's just internally cryptic and their their mention of uh the crow character uh ironwood crow uh the 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 list of characters that are in that rank that uh that are mentioned uh again uh Gen uh, the genesis of you know Miles and Ruby, uh, Miles and Ruby, Miles and Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, characters. Uh, Ironwood is definitely uh, uh, Miles and Carrie's character. They come up with him, and uh, he definitely helps to like push the plot along. So where's the cowardly lion in that group? <laughs> <laughs> We've had conversations about this whole uh, Wizard of Oz cast. Um, We'll see. We've actually had conversations about a Dorothy character and a, and a Lion character. Not, nothing set in stone or fleshed out at the moment, but again, another thing we can draw from. Just sure. Because. Okay. Um, so I have, a, I have a Twitter question from at Electra's Complex. Will the game that the Ruby Girls were playing in tonight's episode ever be made into an, an actual game? <laughs> Muriel I, was uh, asking that, too. Yeah, you I, activated my trap card. Right. I was having Yu-Gi-Oh! flashbacks. I, me, too. <laughs> it's like, you activated my trap card. Oh, no! <laughs> We'll see. Uh, you know, that's that's not really my department. It is our department, uh, me, Miles, and Carrie, though, to come up with stuff that may or may not be marketable. Like, you know, we we you, we'll wholly admit to sometimes saying, "Let's put this in an episode because that would make a great figure," mm -hmm. but mostly just so we could get the figure ourselves. I don't know if I'm about, I don't know about selling it. We just want we just want the stuff, like the plushies. We're like, when are we getting when are we getting the plushies? Because we sold out of plushies at RTX and none of us got any. And we're like, oh, no. but yeah. Uh, We'll see. It's it's one of those things where I I would like to see the game happen. If it does, that would be cool. It's like a cross between Risk and Magic the Gathering. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was also it was also a good opportunity script wise, and this was genius on Miles and Carrie's part to just throw out names that. Yeah. I mean, it's been in the back of our head for like continent, and you know, I mean, when I first made that map, we started like labeling things. Oh, this is this country, and this is this country, and we're like. So let's let's start using it. This is like this is the season where we're like, you know, we've had these ideas. Let's start putting putting them on paper and yeah, on screen. Just peppering Vacuo, them through. Vacuo, mantle, etc. Atlas. Atlas. Um, but uh, an, another thing, I mean, you could do is I know that there's supposed to be a Ruby video game. It could be a mini game within it, kind of like Tetra Triad was in Final Fantasy IX. Uh, yeah. But no uh, one liked that. that. I like Tetra Triad. <laughs> Am I wrong for liking Tetra Triad? No. This yeah. is a safe space. It's We're a safe place. place. It's a good no. <laughs> I'm not judging him. I'm judging the game. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> um, so, uh, Ozpin and Ironwood... Uh, I'm wondering, uh, and and some folks on Twitter are wondering, uh, uh, at Lagazard, are we ever going to see uh, Professor Ozpin in action? Are we going to see him fight at all this year? I actually, I actually had like a fight for for Ozpin in mind, like well before even like the show existed. Just the idea of his character and his weapon. Mm -hmm. um, it gets pushed back the more we, you know. Uh, Add characters, and you know we got it. We just got to stay responsible. Like, okay, we also have characters we need to use now. So I hope, I hope people aren't disappointed in first. Like, okay, there's a lot people want. Let's start with the, the, the top of the list stuff, like Team Ruby stuff, because they're the main characters. So, and then we'll go down from there. Uh, Ozpin is definitely better for, uh, you know, being the authority figure at the moment. But that's not saying. I mean, he is also, uh, you know, a very good hunter, and uh, he'll be able to take action. Uh, when it when it becomes necessary, that's that's the thing. You know, I'm an old man. I <laughs> I, I don't I don't get up these days unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> so, same thing. He's an old guy, and he'll take action when it becomes necessary. It seems to me that he's kind of like Death in Soul Eater. You know, runs the academy, in charge of everything, and you only see him step in when you really really need the big guns. And when he yeah. does, it's completely epic. 
So mm-hmm. I'm I'm not expecting an Ozpin fight for seasons. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm expecting all sorts of things to hit the fan before he steps yeah. out and takes care of it. Megan, you have any questions? Um, I had one earlier, but I yeah. forgot. Oh. Um, so uh, uh, at Kifa S uh, wants to know, uh, Sun, Neptune, Scarlet. Is Sun's team SNES? SNES? <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, someone, someone was close, and it, and it was mentioned, and I. I might have favorited it. Ooh. Ooh. I, I, I don't so know. You oh. just realized you just got someone to look through all your favorites. Um, that's all of Tumblr that's going to be looking through all of his favorites and finding every single oh, possibility. No. But that's not I, even I right. It was like, close. That saying it, me favoriting it, and then I guess it was so low because the person you know didn't have a lot of followers. But I was like, you got it. I mean, I don't. I didn't mind it getting out there because it's. I mean, you know, the, that's the, not a the crucial detail. Isn't as big a deal as the character, but it's, yeah. it's nice for people to like, who like to figure this stuff out. Sure. Well, and the food hints on your Tumblr have been an absolute blast. <laughs> We're still waiting for Neapolitan to come around. Oh yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> Um, at D- at a at yeah at Demon Squirrel thirty six Patrick Briscoe says it, it's become a gag for Ruby fans to tell you Monty to get some sleep. Has yes. that made it into the show in any way? Uh, no, because I I mean I gotta make the show one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean there were a lot of gags we tried to put in there, but I mean I'd rather people watch the show for yeah. It, I mean, there's the references and stuff, believe me, but I'd rather it be more Rooster Teeth oriented than me oriented. Right. So, yeah. All right. I, I have to ask, I know you, you kind of like almost mentioned it earlier, but like a lot of people are asking if you can tell us exactly how old Cinder is. We, we had a lot of asks about that on Tumblr, a lot too. Of, a lot like of Tumblr asks. She blend in? Uh, a lot of live chat asks. <laughs> uh, she's not that much older. She's older enough, but I mean, man, Asians, right? <laughs> there are some people who you know, look young for uh, a, a good amount of time, and you know, especially girls. Mm-hmm. How do you do it? I mean, it's awesome. Occasionally, but, uh, it runs in the family. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things. You know, moisturize, <laughs> wear sunblock, and you know, moisturize a lot and wear sunblock because <laughs> I'm you know I'm going I'm going past I'm an I'm past thirty and it's like oh man I should have took care of this she okay she moisturized a lot okay <laughs> moisturize me <laughs> oh gets... <laughs> good Doctor Who reference uh, yeah how could I yeah. not anyone who is a Doctor Who fan we're gonna be doing the Doctor Who after show when that starts <laughs> up uh, back in August if anyone's a Doctor Who August. fan please Photoshop Cinder's face onto Cassandra that's hysterical oh, Lord. <laughs> um, we got tag me on Tumblr I want to see it yeah we got another uh, uh, another couple of questions. First of all, does Cinder recognize Ruby from the first episode? I have to imagine she's aware oh, of who she is. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, Cinder's got one of is one of those people who's got her hands and everything. She knows what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't be. You know, you, if you're going up against Ospin, you have to know everything. Like, you know, you have you have to have have, have your hooks in every corner because you know, messing up against a guy that powerful would be you know disastrous for you. So. She's very smart. That's one of my things about wanting to make her uh, the the main villain is that she's just a very smart character. Mm-hmm. Um, look for the internal dialogue, especially. That's one of the most important things that gets put into the animations. Absolutely. Yeah, she's the Daenerys Targaryen to his Tywin Lannister, except alignment swapped. Right. <laughs> well, I can't wait until we get some some hints as to her motivation because right now it's just kind of mustache twirling, like I ooh, I'm like, plotting. I feel like Global it's got to be it's got to be more personal than that. It's Could not it, it, like anything that's this massive. Like to me, everything about her says this is some kind of vendetta for something that happened to her in her past. I think while she was at school. That's my current. Theory, but speaking of theories, we have a question: uh, how, When do you decide which fan theories to debunk and which ones to just kind of let stay out there? Like when you reach out and say, "Hey guys, this this is not a thing." How? Like, what is the reasoning? Is it because it's super off, or because it's kind of close and you don't want people to? Uh... No, uh, I, I if it's super off, I I mostly look at it and go like. I've been there because I, you know, I'm a fan of a lot of things too, and I'll have theories. I, I've had theories about Final Fantasy and even Gellion and stuff. And like, uh, I've gone, you know, this many years of my life being like, oh, 
<laughs> like, <laughs> I like my theory more. And like, but that's after you like you sit with it for years. And like, you know, it's, it's part of me being like, well, I feel really bad about not being able to pay off this stuff like so quickly. And they're gonna sit there coming up with their internal like their head cannon for it. And then they're gonna be like, oh, it's like, how did you know? How did they let me go this far? Because with the way our production works, it's like we put in the clues, we put in the hints, and uh, if we're leading you wrong, uh, it's always our fault, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's not it, it, it's the the, the 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 people who I interact with, I know they're super fans. You know, if I had the chance to talk to any of the people in charge of the things I liked growing up, and it's you know. As little as time as I have to talk to them, I, I have to talk about what I do. Interacting at least, it's like, it's kind of like being like, oh yeah, I'm a fan of stuff too, and I know what it's like to have theories, but uh, you know, it's it's at least part of a conversation I wish I could have with everyone, but I kind of I kind of just kind of throw it out there and move on because it's like, I if you got me at, if you got me at a sitting at a cafe and we just sat down and had this conversation, I would probably just spill the whole thing to you. Yeah. But it's like. So where's the so, nearest cafe? Yeah, no, do you want to have coffee or gelato or? Um, when are you coming out to L.A. or buy yeah. your latte? <laughs> uh, here we actually so uh, the the awesomeness and the the power and the obsessiveness of the fans of Ruby continues to impress me. We already have an answer. Have you been on Tumblr? Well, no, but. <laughs> Nereal says it was the name <laughs> of. It would be Nereal. Yeah. It would be uh, you. It was Seasons. You actually retweeted it. Uh, no. No? No. Whoa! <laughs> Shocker. It was not oh Seasons, Nereal. Um, well, you guys got Scarlet right, so it's like. It was there. I, I I can't I can't for the life of me remember the username, but it was there. I, All I know. right, keep it's still there. Neary. Keep trying, keep folks. Keep digging, Neri. Keep digging. <laughs> we know you will. Yeah. Um, can you? Uh, oh, we got a, an interesting question. Actually, I really am. I'm interested. So at Pulsar Tech ninety three, who was that cloaked figure in the first opening sequence, and who is the narrator of the first episode? Uh. Well, the narrator is played by uh, Jen Taylor, who voices Cortana. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who she is as a character, we'll see. It's one of those things where if things work out uh, well, you know, we'll we'll have. I mean, we'll have more of her. Well, because she was talking to Ozpin in the in that opening monologue. Oh yeah, you remember that? Um, yeah. <laughs> there's, stuff, there's stuff this season where, uh, I mean, we're unfortunate. I mean, unfortunately, though, it's for the better, but we're not one of those shows where we can sit there and explain everything for minutes on end like most animes because we just don't have the real estate for it. So like I really like those uh, those like between uh, commercial break or end of episode cards that Attack on Titan had. Yes! Where they, where they explained how things work. I want to do something like that. Um, and we kind of have something like that to help like People really want to know about the world, and if you're really a fan, then you'll really you'll really appreciate these. So more of those would be would would, would be great. You should just release a Ruby strategy guide, like <laughs> yes. re resurrect like Prima or Brady games, and just <laughs> release a full strategy guide for a show. Well, we did so have funny. someone asking about on Tumblr, anime fan eighteen stuff. Asking how you keep the different details of the world straight. Is there a world bible? Is there a big map on your wall? How do you do it? Uh, I've got a bunch of scribbles <laughs> and like notepads and like you know text documents. Um, the stuff that's really important that I'm I'm beginning to realize I'm, I forget stuff these days because I'm getting old. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, it's funny. One of the things I want to do kind of tend to be based on the sequence. It's like let's make this thing that revolves around this really cool event that you know in some animes where they. It happens just right where the music kicks in, like at the end of Gurren Login, and like you know every one of those robots just kept getting smaller until the end. And it's like I, I live for those moments. And it doesn't even have to be uh, like completely text-based. It could just be a moment. And I mean, I have a reserve of sequences I want to make. Sequences I've been wanting to make for the last like 15 years. So I live on those and try to translate those into things that I can say, you know, Miles Curry, we need to get here so I can do this. Right. You know. Yeah. Okay. And I have a question for you that several asked. Uh, Robo Candy and Kel Keldeo, Keldeo, I'm not sure how to say your name, on Tumblr, asking if there will be any queer characters in Ruby, any uh, bi oh, or LGBT. gay or lesbian. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Um, 
the the best part about that is you know maybe they're there now because uh they're kids so they're there we we're on a path to try to help them to discover themselves so i mean i i don't you know i don't think they even need to make that we don't even need to make that decision right away because uh we are as we write these characters we learn about them and kind of help them figure themselves out and they're very real to us um so you know we're definitely not opposed to it i'm a lot of us are for it even like a, uh, i have some cast members and some crew members who are like this would be really cool but the thing is we can't just shove it out there it's just it has to be earned which is which is the better way to do it uh and a lot of these characters we try to look look at them outside of their gender so we just will want to do what's natural for them at best absolutely okay um, now, I know you can't spoil anything about what's coming, but do you have, like, a chapter or a moment in particular coming up in season two that you're like, man, I can't wait for people to see this, like, the thing that you're like, oh, this, I can't <laughs> wait to hear what people have to say. Well, we're, like, smack dab in the middle of production. Like, we've got it. We're, we're like, we're, 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 like, laying the tracks as the train oh, is Oh, man. Wait, out. how many episodes do you have completed right now? How many are left? Uh, we're we're good on like majority of it. Like it's just like that final cincher of like, mm -hmm. oh, we need to spit and polish on these things and catch like the mistakes that pop up naturally. You know, we we leave that stuff. You know, we we try to catch that stuff, and you know, it it always it, it's it takes as long as we have to make it. Mm -hmm. But like, if I had to come up with like, if I had to say something, I'm like, I'm I can't wait for you to see. It's like that was something I just finished a week ago, and my head is in like this next thing. So I'm like, uh, it's all cool, but let me think about this now. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a chapter four thing that's really cool, and then smack right after we realize, oh wait, this other cool thing in chapter five happens right afterwards, and we're like, how did we not space that out? <laughs> I don't care, it's cool, just assault, assault, assault with all this like uh, craziness. Yeah. The fans are going to be overloaded and very happy. Yeah. Uh, Monty, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, hopefully, maybe we could have you back, uh, maybe for the season finale. Sure. All Absolutely. Right. That'd be great. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much, man. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, Monty. Right. Thank, you. thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Monty Ohm and the folks at Rooster Teeth uh, for helping set that up. Uh, and, and, you know, folks, like I mentioned uh, uh, iTunes earlier, but also share this video with your friends. You know, let them know that this is the place to go every other Thursday. We're going to be doing this every two weeks. So the next show is going to be on August 14th, I believe. Yes. Uh, and we want to make this the number one destination for Ruby fans on Thursdays when the show airs. We're going to have guests for you every single week. Uh, and we really need your support to make it the best thing that it can be. We're working with Rooster Teeth to make it the best thing that it can be. So, you know, let's all be fans together. Yes. All right? Yay. We Fantastic. love each other. It's yeah. a good time. Um, so now we have a, a special piece from Comic Con that mm -hmm. uh, that Megan and uh, our good friend Kristen Carroll did with two of the members of the cast. Megan, you want to talk about it? Yes, Kara and Aaron. They were so so nice enough to let us come by and and do a little short interview. And we have some highlights from that interview um, ready to go. Uh, if you want to catch the full interview, you can go to After Buzz TV on YouTube, and uh, the full thing is about eight minutes long. So. Fantastic. Hi, AfterBuzz TV fans. This is Megan Salinas, and I am here today to talk with Kara Everly and Aaron Zek, a.k.a. the voice of Weiss and the voice of Blake from Rooster Teeth's Ruby. How do you guys feel about Volume 2? I'm really excited so for everyone's reaction. It should be great. It's going to be, be a lot of fun. so good. It's like tenfold better than last year. They figure out what went wrong last year and how to make it better, and they did, and I'm super excited about it. Fans were wondering, is there anything you guys do in particular to get into character? But I kind of actually... Do what I would think Weiss would do as a process. I read through the script four times, one time for the story, second time to highlight Weiss, figure out her feelings, third time to figure out feelings of other characters, fourth time go through, uh, talk out loud, and actually go through, run through the whole thing. So kind of what Weiss would probably do, you know, if she was, you know, voice acting. <laughs> for, for Blake, the first volume, I would actually like turn off the lights and get as condensed as possible. But for this season, she's considerably more uh, outgoing and talkative and it's, she breaks out of her shell a little bit more so I didn't have to do that it was just more just being there was a good way to start <laughs> 
On what level do you uh, do you each relate to your characters? Um, I actually relate to Blake a lot. I'm usually a really hyperactive, energetic, like uppity person, but I think she she's more of my like when I'm by myself person, like very calm, collected, reading, just thinking forward, and I I relate to her. Why does I relate to uh, kind of the way like she does things? You know, she likes to be a little perfect, you know, as I mentioned about the way that I read the script. There's always a process to everything, and she always has her routines down, and I'm very much like that. If I don't have everything as I think it's going to be in my head, I'll kind of have a freak out, which is probably what Weiss would do, too. Besides your own characters, are there any characters you want to read lines for? In Ruby or in, like... Yeah, in Ruby. Oh, gosh. If I could be Jean, that would be cool. Just take Miles' job. <laughs> that one. Ruby for sure. Yeah. I, I love I love her voice. Just give me the lead. <laughs> yes, I'll be the lead. Voicing Ruby would be so much fun too, just because she's such a little kid and it's she's so excited and she's so much fun and so happy and, uh, and I'm like, I wanna do that and not be like, yeah, yeah, you know. So that was actually a really good impression. <laughs> I wanna voice her, right? I could do it. I could take Lindsay's job. Shh, don't tell Lindsay. <laughs> Mom's the word, it's only going on the internet. No worries. Are there any memorable slash funny or embarrassing booth stories that you would like to share with us today? Miles hit me. <laughs> what? No, um, we when I first... Do we need to someone? Do we need to call HR? Yeah. When I first started um, doing efforts, that was something that was new to me, and I you completely forget about efforts whenever you're watching something because they just blend in so well, but efforts are the sounds that you make whenever you get hit, when you hit someone, when you fall, things like that. But because I wasn't used to it, I had Miles come in the booth and just, like, pretend to hit me, and at one point he accidentally did hit me. So that's my story. Miles hit me. If you guys could be a faunus in real life, what traits would you have? Can I be a mermaid? <laughs> Does that count? Are mermaids faunus? I'm gonna be a mermaid. Close enough. <laughs> yes, I'm a mermaid, but I'd be able to change back. I have, yes. I'd wanna be a monkey. I love that. Like, I could crawl up anything, hang from my tail, just crawl, hide, get on whatever I want to. That'd be really cool. I'd be the monkey. I'd be like son's girlfriend. You could be a possum. <laughs> Possums hang upside down too. <laughs> They're not as cute as monkeys. They're not. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time thank to talk you. to us today. Thank you so much. It's so fun. Uh, this is Megan for AfterBuzz TV. All right, Megan, that was awesome. Uh, uh, the credit goes to, uh, we had a bunch of Tumblr users submit questions and a bunch of people on uh, Twitter as well. Um, the Golden Locks, I'm not being able to, I'm not able to remember all of the submissions that we got, but I think you had like 43 notes or something on that I had Tumblr 43 post. notes because Erin reblogged it. Yeah. Because yeah. evidently she follows the Blake tag, <laughs> and I forgot that so when I tagged you, it. So thank you, Tumblr. Um, like thank I said, the you, Golden Tumblr. Locks, uh, Miles Effing Luna. Miles Effing Luna <laughs> was the one that stood out to I'm me. Like, very, can we say your name on an interview? I'm very curious. I know it was just kind of like what she was, what she would dream of, but if there are fish faunas, because I know fauna <laughs> is like meant to be animals, not fish, but it could be interesting. That I, would be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised. All right. Uh, Megan, uh, remind the people where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter at the Megan. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-U-I-N. I'm also on the Sword Art Online and Attack on Titan After Buzz panels. Okay, and Katie? You can find me on Twitter, Tumblr, and the Rooster Teeth site at Kiaje. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I'm also on Attack on Titan, Sword Art Online, and Legend of Korra, all three panels, all on Sunday. Okay, folks, and you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. I'm on a bunch of AfterBuzz TV shows. I'm doing The Strain right now, Ray Donovan, uh, Defiance, Halt and Catch Fire, Marin, Under the Dome. Uh, this may be my last Ruby show for right Aww. now just because my schedule is insane, but I will, be, I will try to be back before the end of the season, uh, hopefully for the season finale. I would love that. We've um, made you a fan, yeah. whether you like it or not. Well, hey, I've been having a blast watching it. In any case, guys, we'll see you again in two weeks, August 14th. iTunes, tweet about the show, retweet the show. Booth guy will too. Bye. Yes. Yeah, Booth guy. Booth guy. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Dust you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. 
Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.